Wedding the 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 This episode is brought to you by Generation Tux, the perfect suit or tuxedo delivered straight to your door. GenerationTux.com. Well, hello. Thank you so much for tuning in to Weddings-ish with Jove, a podcast all about love, joy, and weddings-ish with a special guest every episode. This episode, I'm super excited and lucky to have in studio amazing baker, Amy France, uh, also known as Young Kombucha 420. I'm so happy that you're here. Thank you for having me. Yes, we met actually for the very first time today. I've only ever met you over email. Yeah, yeah, we did. Um, It was so exciting. We had our very first wedding together just last month. October, right? October. Yeah, beginning of October. Yes. Um, End of September. I don't know what month it is either. (laughs) Um, But I have been obsessed with your cakes for a very long time. Thank you. Um, You're welcome. Before we talk about the cakes, Young Kombucha 420, (laughs) (laughs) I have to ask, that is such a creative Instagram name. Where does it come from? So, okay, so my food account like used to be a Finsta. Okay. And I literally made it probably the, like my sophomore year of college. Okay. So I was just like, what should I name it? And like I really liked kombucha and uh-huh. like I used to smoke weed. Not anymore though. I'm okay. anti weed. Okay. But um we'll talk about that a little later. Yeah. But um yeah, so I just like thought of the name and I was like, huh. Like, and then you like just... that's silly. And then uh-huh. it just kind of stuck. And now People know me by it, and, like, I'd love to change my username, but I feel like I just, like, can't You can't. It's it's your roots. Yeah. Your roots of Young Kombucha 420. So you – how did you start baking? So I actually been, like, thinking a lot about this recently, like, Mm -hmm. back to childhood, because I did a lot of baking when I was younger, and, like, my mom baked. Every year she would always make me a birthday cake, and Mm -hmm. they were, like – it's not like she was just, like, making – a cake like from the box yeah like one year she made me this like webkins themed one that was like i don't know if like you are familiar with like webkins no i don't know what that is i was gonna ask if you know what wacky zingos is like she made me like a wacky zingos cake okay and i just have like really vivid memories of her making cute little cakes for me every year and Mm -hmm. we would make this one chocolate cake that's like still my favorite to this day and the chocolate cake I make, like, for my business is based off that recipe, Aww. which is, yeah. It's, it's very like, sweet, yeah. very sentimental. Um, But, yeah, so we were, like, doing stuff when I was younger. And also, like, there was this party that my family and our family friends would always have in the summer mm-hmm. called the Quahog Party. Okay. Are you from the East Coast? <laughs> yes. Okay. I'm like, that does not sound very West Coast to me. Um, and every year there was a baking competition okay. and, like, my cousin and I would go so hard for this baking competition. Like one time we made this whole sheet cake and it was like a beach theme and yep. we made like little people out of marzipan and put oh, it wow. on there. We lost every year every to this year. like other like little girl. But it was Did like, you place like second or third or like, just? Like second, but it was okay. like we should have won, you know. So you like, didn't lose, you just yeah. were first alternate as yeah. they say. <laughs> but yeah, so we were, I was like doing that when I was younger. But then um, I went vegan. Mm-hmm. When I was in high school and that's when I kind of like started getting into baking because I like couldn't find a vegan dessert that I really liked. And I just thought like everything was kind of like healthified and like not good. Yeah. So I was like making cakes for fun. Nothing like I'm doing today at all. So you didn't start out with this level of creativity that you have. Yeah. But I was just like making cakes. And Mm -hmm. then I think over the pandemic is when... I really, really got into it because I was in school, but it was online school. Got it. So you were home I, all day and yeah. night, like the rest of us. Yeah. And I ended up like being at my parents' house mm-hmm. because literally the day before the pandemic, I was going home to like go on a ski vacation with them. And then I got home that night and then the world shut down. That, so literally I, like, right when you got home. Yeah. So like oh I gosh. couldn't come back to New York, which was a blessing. Yeah. Cause it was chaotic <laughs> but, here. Yeah. So I was just home and I was like, well, I guess I'll just like teach myself how to bake, but like vegan, but using traditional baking methods. And that's like literally what I did. And and like I said, I I had this Instagram account just for fun that I made in college. So I was just like, I guess. As a Finsta. And for people that don't know what a Finsta is, can you explain? It's like a fake Instagram. So you can stalk other people, but they don't know. 
Yeah, but I, I guess I was just mu- using it as like just like posting like food pictures. Like I'd okay, go to the it. dining hall at my school and be like, "We worked the salad today. Like, look what I made." Got and it. people would be like, "Oh, cool." And so it was more like just for fun, nothing professional, no yeah. like thoughts of money or business, just like yeah, exactly. a fun account. Gotcha. Um, so I but I started posting, I guess like nicer photos mm-hmm. over the pandemic and I just gained a following and then came back to New York in like August, I think, of 2021. And I had this product. I was still in school. I had no idea what I wanted to do. Like, What I was were you studying? Communications. Okay. But like something deep inside me knew I wanted to do something entrepreneurial, but I just like didn't know exactly what it was. Mm-hmm. Um, and like the communications job just sounded horrible to me. I was yeah. like, I can't like imagine myself <laughs> doing that. What was that in your mind? Like what is a communications job? I don't really. It would be working in like an office writing newsletters for okay. like a company like that's like what the entry gotcha. level job that's is. like where you would have gone yeah so um i just was like on instagram one day and i saw hester street fair which mm-hmm. like used to be on hester street when i actually did it and you like pay for a table yeah. and then you can like sell stuff and i texted my friends and i was just like should i like do this and they're they were like why not so and that was the first time you sold your cakes to the world yeah and, and that I, was 2000 2021. 2021. So okay. yeah, we were like still wearing masks like yes. outside, like at like the Everywhere fair. Everywhere we went, yeah. Yeah. And I ended up selling out and it was just like, I was like, wait, like, can I do something with this? Mm-hmm. Like, like maybe. And then I was, I was still, I was still in school while I was doing all of this, okay. but it was still online. So what year were you like a junior or senior? I think this was like end of junior year going into okay. senior year. And then senior year was approaching. Still now I'm like back in New York, but I'm still doing online school. Mm-hmm. And my parents are like, like time's a ticking. Yeah, like, get a job. I'm like, what's happening? <laughs> what's happening when you graduate? And, what's yeah. gonna what are you gonna do? And I'm like, guys, like, listen, you don't understand. Like Instagram, <laughs> like I can do something with this. And they were like, like They didn't what do you mean? They didn't believe in you in that capacity. Yeah, but it took some convincing and they they were like, All right, like we'll let you like try to do this. And it ended up just like working out and wow. I fell into this job and okay. it's just like grown from there, which so is crazy. The street fair was the first part of it. And then when did you get your first wedding cake commission? Um, I think September of like 2022. Okay. I actually like really vividly remember this day because yeah. my friend and I had to Uber it to like Flatbush. Uh-huh. And I was in the, like, I never delivered a cake that big. Okay. I'm like, that, and honestly, like, that's before I, like, knew about baking math as uh-huh. well as I do now. Like, having to weigh everything so it's, like, actually, like, structurally. Sound. Yeah. And the poles that you have to put in the cake. Yeah, and exactly. All the so I'm, like, in the Uber going to Flatbush. I've, like, never been to Flatbush before. <laughs> like, holding this thing, like. My friends like in there. I'm like I'm like freaking out. Like <laughs> trying to like my arms after my arms were sore the next day from like, like grasping it yeah. literally. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, but it made it, and yeah. the people ended up liking they it. They loved it. Yeah, and I got to go to Flatbush. So it, there it was you a go. fun day. <laughs> I mean, there you go. And that was that. So that was just a, a little over a year ago. Yeah, I might have the timing wrong on that. It no, might be a little still, earlier, but, but still, that's amazing. Thank you. And then from there, um it just sort of organically grew because you don't advertise yourself as like a wedding vendor. Like you don't have the, and that's not a good or bad thing. You don't have the energy of like, I'm in weddings and I make your (laughs) dreams come true. And like, come taste a million cakes and we'll design your cake together. It's sort of a little bit of a, a very different energy, which I respect about you. Thank you. Um, because it's not what I'm used to, I guess, as a wedding Mm -hmm. professional, you're sort of like, this is what I make, take it or leave it. That's kind of interesting hearing your like perspective My about take on that it? versus like what I'm doing because you know I'm so used to people just like not they I don't know they just like understand it mm-hmm. but hearing it from like I guess I I don't realize how differently I run my business versus probably like other wedding uh-huh. cake businesses yeah. So, well, because you didn't come yeah. up in the wedding cake world. Like, yeah. I feel like some people apprentice with a cake maker and then they start their own company or they go to pastry school and then they work. Some, you know what I mean? Like, and there's no right way to do anything. But I wondered if that was intentional or if it was just sort of like, no, this is how I'm running my business yeah. because this is how I think it's, you know, this is how I want to do it. 
yeah, I think I think it was unintentional. Yeah, I love it. I mean, even your Instagram says like "Do not DM for orders." Like it's like in all caps. Yeah, communicated very clearly. Like. <laughs> Please don't. Well, it's because, like, you know, with our emails, like, I have yeah. this, like, whole form. Like, I can't yep. send you that over DM. And, yeah, like, it's hard. I get so many DMs yeah. every single day. It's hard enough to, like, go through and respond to everyone. Yeah. And then people are, like, trying to, like, include work in there. I just think email is, like, the, the way best to go. format. It's yeah. so organized. Like, I'll see it. Always email. Don't yeah. DM. I agree. I mean, I feel like DM is for, like, flirting or complimenting, yeah, which I guess or like is flirting. a little like chit chat, you know, yeah, like yeah. a little chit chat, but not like business. I yeah. agree. It's hard when you have people communicating with you on different formats and different, you know, Instagram and then Twitter and email and text. I'm like, where did you message me? Oh my gosh, yeah. Just I keep it easy. I understand. <laughs> um, and then in terms of your cakes, are they all vegan, or is that something you offer to some people, or or how does that look and work? So like the base, like the cake itself, mm -hmm. like. The actual like cake that is getting put in the oven yep. is vegan. Okay. But you can request if you want the buttercream or the filling vegan. So I use like vegan alternatives like ricotta, like, mm -hmm. like you know, like Kite Hill has like good brands of that stuff or like vegan cream cheese. But then I'll also do dairy fillings or a dairy buttercream Got it. if you want it. But like I always say that like the cake itself is vegan. Yeah, it doesn't – I don't use – um regular like dairy milk and mm -hmm. I, I don't bake with eggs. Okay. So got it. So it's a fully yeah. vegan cake and the frosting can or cannot be vegan based yeah. on your preference. And you love the farmer's market. Oh yes I do. I feel like <laughs> you are hyper seasonal in a way I haven't seen before, which is very exciting. How did that sort of come to be? How did you create these standards for yourself? I feel like when I came to New York and and I was like still vegan, mm -hmm. I was kind of opened up to this like world of food I had never seen before. Mm -hmm. I just thought that was like so magical that like there was like fully vegan restaurants that were like super hyper focused yeah. around vegetables and like seasonal produce. And I actually think like I'm not vegan anymore. I I was vegan for like almost five years, but I think if I never went vegan, I would have never found this like appreciation for produce and vegetables and mm -hmm. like working with them. Because it's like a deep dive yeah. into it. When it's exactly. your world is vegetables and produce, you kind of have to love it. Yeah. So that was like awesome. And then I remember I just like, like there were farms near my house. Um, I'm from New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. So like there, there's farms, but <laughs> nothing like the farmer's markets here where yeah. they just have like all of these different varieties of fruits and vegetables and like things you've never seen before. And like you try something and you're like, like a mango peach, like what is that? Like yeah. I'm literally like never seen that in my life. Yeah. So that was just like super inspiring. And I remember when I like first moved in out of the dorm into an apartment, I would always go to the farmer's market and I wasn't getting a lot cause I was like still in college, mm -hmm. but I just remember walking around and being like, Oh my in God. Shock for what like, it is. wow, yeah. like this is crazy. Like the Union Square one or just like your local one where you were? Because I feel like there's so many throughout the city. I would go to Union Square. I still do like Union Square is like my the like. Mecca. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I would go to the Tompkins one a lot. Okay. But yeah. I haven't gone there in a while, but I used to yeah, all, all the time. Gotcha. And so that inspires your flavors and your choices in terms of like the way you think about flavors. Yeah. I love seeing like, I think it's like a really special to like, let's say like a cranberry, for example, mm -hmm. having a cranberry around this time of year and like a cranberry jam and just like all the warm spices that's so like in tune to this time mm -hmm. and like the holidays. And there's just like something about that feeling of having like, I don't know, like cranberry jam on like a spice cake with yep. like cream cheese. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I would eat that right now. <laughs> yeah. Versus like, imagine like having that like in the summer. Yeah. Like it's that, not what you, it loses yeah. its beauty. I like agree. in the summer you want to have like your strawberries and like your fruits and like maybe something lighter or like a chocolate with fruit and a cream. It's like, you have to like, I don't know, like time everything out. Yep. And sometimes people will request things like this time of year. And I'm like, I'm not making that right yeah. now. Like, I'm sorry that you want this, yeah. but like, it's just like, 
the time for that is is not now. Is not now. <laughs> and I love that you do that. I have to be very honest. I think at first I was sort of taken aback because in the industry, it's an industry of yes. Like someone's getting married and vendors are like, okay, that's weird. I'll make it happen or whatever you want. You know, there's kind of this like bridezilla complex, which I don't <laughs> love. I think yeah. we've created it, movies, TV, J-Lo, like that like a bride – can get whatever she wants. You know what I mean? But when I messaged you, you were like, no, it's not in season, <laughs> period. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like there was no like, let me see what I could do or yeah. like, oh, let me find out if there's like frozen. I don't know. I'm not a baker. It was just like, no. And in many ways I was like, at first I was like, wait a minute. Wow. Who is she? Like what is going on? I'm obsessed with hearing this perspective. Yeah. I'm I like, thought you would enjoy it. hundred percent. And then I sort of like went and did a 180 and I was like, wait a minute. I love that you just said, that's not what I do. If you want that, maybe someone else should do that for you. And I think like in our industry, we're people pleasers who are just trying to make everybody happy and you make people happy, but in the world that makes you happy. Mm -hmm. And I think that like, then I was, I went from being like, wow, that's so odd to like, I'm jealous <laughs> that she has boundaries almost in a way that many of us, I think don't have, you know, like when a client wants something, you're like, I'm going to make all your dreams come true. Mm -hmm. um, and I really sort of loved that. That's your approach. You're like, this Thank is you. how I do it. This is what I offer. And you know, you communicate very clearly <laughs> in terms of what you make and what you don't make, mm -hmm. um, which I love. And I guess in the world of weddings, is that something you want to do more of? Or you also sell mini cakes almost every week. Mm -hmm. Is that sort of like a, when you think of your dream business you're building, like what are the buckets that you want to to continue to expand in and do? I, I, I love doing wedding cakes. They're always a little stressful. Yeah. But – because, you know, like you said, the bridezilla thing. Like, uh -huh. And I always and think about... And They're yeah. also out there. <laughs> but, like, a wedding cake, like, when you think about a wedding, the wedding cake is such, like, a pinnacle moment. Yes. Everyone is watching yeah. you slice this cake. Exactly. So that's a lot of pressure on the <laughs> on baker. You. And I think a lot of people do not think about that. No, like, they don't. I'm not kidding. Sometimes when I have a wedding cake in the fridge, like I have stress dreams and like I'll wake up in the middle of the night. And check the fridge. And like check the fridge. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh my God, it's like, it okay. But no, I will like not sleep for like many days. Because you care yeah. deeply about the cake. <laughs> no, I seriously A stress do. dream. I've, I've had many, a wet <laughs> stress dream. Like I wake up sweaty and like. <laughs> it's not even any nothing could have gone wrong because nothing had happened yet but I'm there with you no, the stress yeah. dreams are real in this industry um, um but, but anyways yeah like I like to make wedding cakes when I get when I get an order from them like I take it if I have availability yeah um and mostly most of the time like wedding cakes do get priority just because they're like such larger orders yeah. and they take way more time um but it's just kind of like my business is so go with the flow kind yep. of. It's just like I get an order. I'm like, okay, every month is different. Yeah. It's not like I'm like, all right, like this month I'm making like seven wedding cakes. Yeah. It ends up being like I don't make wedding cakes for like three months and then I get one month and I'm making like All 10. the cakes. Yeah. yeah. Like that was like October and September. I think there was like four weekends. I had like two massive non wedding cakes, cakes every weekend. Yeah. And then it ended and I was like, Whoa, like, what, what just, just happened, happened to my life <laughs> yeah. and your body? I mean, how much time does it take to, because you make the mix, you bake it, you stack it, and then you fill it and you frost it. Mm -hmm. And your frosting, I think, is part of the magic of what you do. But what is like average time for someone who doesn't know for like a 150 person wedding cake? Like what does that look like for you? How many days? How many hours? Okay. Um, so I feel like it usually takes like three days mm -hmm. max because I, I kind of have it like down to a science now yeah. but um usually I like prep all my fillings and everything at the beginning of the week so that's just like done yeah um and then I try to bake the cake like a day or two before and then freeze it so it's like super secure okay um and then like you let it to thaw and cut it because like people don't realize but like when you get a wedding cake like every wedding cake has gone in the freezer at some point. Yeah. And I think that, honestly, I think when you freeze a cake, especially olive oil cake, it makes it, like, way more moist hmm. because, like, the, 
um, molecules in it and whatever, they're like expanding and contracting. So once it's like been in the freezer, it just like, I don't know. I don't know the exact science, but Got like, it. but like it's a real thing. I'm yeah. not making that up. <laughs> yeah. and it's very common that people deep fridge or freezer their cakes because they don't make them on the same day as the wedding. They yeah. have to make them days in advance. Yeah. So, um, like everything's like prepped. And then usually the night, like the day before the wedding, mm -hmm. I make all of the, like I assemble all of the tiers and like put the dowels in and stuff. And then that, depending on like when they pick it up. So like if they're picking it up like midday, I'll assemble it the night before, ideally the night before, but sometimes it ends up being in the morning Yeah. and then they pick it up later in the day. And I'm like, <laughs> because I kind of do like to let it sit of in the fridge overnight. Um, Just to make sure she's good. Yeah. She was like, she's, she's really sturdy. sturdy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Cause your cakes also have a little bit of a lean to them. I mean, you're not, people think of a wedding cake and often they think of like a perfectly clean, symmetrical, mostly white barrel style cake. But mm -hmm. your cake is the complete opposite of that. Yeah. Your cake is like <laughs> wacky and fun and textural and weird in the best way. Um, so I could see why you'd be a little bit nervous because you're not doing this sort of like perfectly symmetrical stacking. Yeah. It's definitely like secure. Like For sure. Yes. <laughs> but it's just like you know, there's always a little like yeah. with with anything. Yeah, even, you're a little even a regular cake. Of course. Um, but yeah. And that's always like I, I like I say I'm a perfectionist, mm -hmm. but not in the way of like the cake has to be like like I'm not like doing the math and like like I've watched so many YouTube videos of people stacking cakes and I'm like Okay. Like they're like, like cake scientists. I'm like, okay, you're like pulling out a drill for that. Yeah. I'm like, I don't even own wow. one of those. <laughs> In order to like make the dowels yeah, and to stack it. And they're it. like like perfectly measuring. Like I'm I'm like doing that, but I'm yeah. not like putting it down to like yeah. a T. You're a little like, bit more go with the flow than yeah. like perfectly by the books. Yeah. And where did this style of frosting come from? Literally, like I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I love like, that answer. What, like I used to just um use like an offset okay. and frost it, but then I think like the first time I ever piped a cake was I did a pop up at Gem, you mm -hmm. know, like the restaurant. Yeah. And I don't know like what compelled me to do that, but I piped one of the cakes and it just kind of like had that look. Yep. And I, oh, another thing is like I don't use a piping tip. Oh. Because I remember the first time I went to pipe a cake, my mom has this like really nice set of piping tip tips mm -hmm. that she gave me. And I was like, oh, like, I can't wait to use them. Yeah. And then I was like trying to put it in the bag and I like couldn't figure it out. I just got like so ticked off that I gave up. <laughs> you swore off on them? Yeah. And so I now just, you like, just cut the bag? Yeah, I just cut the bag and okay. that's how I pipe with like wow. different sizes. Yeah, based on what you're looking for. Yeah. That's amazing. So I feel like, and maybe I, I don't know if you agree, but I feel like wedding cakes in general are moving kind of backwards in time a little bit. Like they're embracing the vintage kind of 1980s vibe. How would you describe your cakes in terms of style and vibe? <laughs> style and vibe? Um, it's not classic. It's not modern. It's not traditional in my mind. Yeah. But I'm curious to hear how you describe your own work. Um, this is honestly a difficult question because uh -huh. I feel like for a long time, and I feel like artists, like a lot of artists have this same feeling that like, when you make something, you don't really like see your aesthetic mm. for a while until people like start pointing it out. And then you're like, oh, like I get it. Yeah. Um, I guess like the only way I could describe it is like by what kind of inspires it. Okay. That's I, great. I really like Baroque architecture mm -hmm. and just like crown molding and things like okay. that. I think I that's that. really beautiful. Yeah. Um, and just like dainty kind of. I have like a lot of the old Wilton piping like mm -hmm. books and they have kind of those type of designs but I think I do it in a little bit of a more I, messy is not the right word but like organic I, yeah I guess like freestyle free form yeah versus like this like perfection mm -hmm. piping method um and I also like whenever I decorate a cake I'm not going unless I have like this like serious vision yeah which like Barely ever happens. <laughs> I, I you don't usually, come across as a very serious person. <laughs> yeah. Um, I kind of just like freehand it. Yeah. And just like 
Got maybe I'll flow. yeah, maybe I'll see like a pattern or like a texture, and I'm like, oh, that could be mm-hmm. cool. And then I try to pipe it, and I'm like, okay. Oh, you and dig like, in, so you just do it. Yeah, I, I don't amazing. really like plan it, and that's why I say like every cake is one of a kind because yeah. I don't have this like exact piping method every single time like mm-hmm. i have like the style but i do it a little different yeah for every cake and is it um how do you keep yourself motivated i feel like how many hours does it take to pipe a cake um, like are, I'm, i imagine you're pretty quick now but like that's a lot of piping for your wrists for your hands oh, for yeah. your body <laughs> for all of you to just stand there and and do it well it's like intervals because you'd like you do a layer and then it goes into the fridge so you have like 15 minutes 20 minutes a nice little built-in break yeah Got it. some stretching and then take it out and then do more i would say like a wedding cake takes like if i'm like really getting into it yeah it'll probably take like four hours gotcha just the piping yeah th- wow. that's just the piping wow. but that's if i'm doing like a really intricate, intricate. one sure um like the one I did for the wedding that you mm-hmm. were a part of, like for that. Blair and Amon, yeah. yeah, that was like a pretty intricate one. It I was beautiful. Thank I you. mean, it showed up and we were like, oh God, I was so this scared. This is gorgeous. I know you were so nervous. <laughs> and we were nervous also because I did her sister's wedding uh-huh. and her sister had a beautiful cake, but the cake maker was in a car accident. <gasps> so the cake showed up as if it were in a car accident. And we salvaged it like the best we could, uh-huh. but it was not the original vision. She's fine, by the way. Like it was a little fender bender, but the cake got the most damage and the car, but the human being was fine, which was what mattered the most. But the cake showed up not great. And so um, we kind of did the best we could with this cake and I hit it over in the corner and we're about to walk down the aisle and she looks at me and she says, is that my wedding cake? And I was like, we'll talk about it later. It's time to focus on love. Like, let's go to the ceremony. Oh my God. Um, so I didn't tell you, but there was like very high stress around oh your God. cake <laughs> because they had just experienced a bad cake delivery before. And now, because um, you don't deliver the cakes, you recommend people who deliver them. It was like, where is this cake? And when is it coming? And is it going to be you know, whole. So when it yeah. arrived, we had like an air conditioned room and we had people to greet the driver and it like stayed in that room that we sat like very, very cold for a long time just to make sure there was no issues with the cake. Cause we were equally as nervous. Oh, thank God. Based on, on you know, page. the past experience, but then it came out and it was, it's just so beautiful and it's so delicious. Oh, thank you. Um, the flavor profile is really, it's unlike other cakes I've tasted a lot of cake in my life, Um, and it's just so interesting, the flavor combinations that you come up with. Is that also just – is that inspired by anything, or you just sort of see it – do you try it first, or do you just sort of like know that these combos are going to work well together? I think they're inspired by the seasons Mm -hmm. for sure, but I think anyone that like works really deeply in food can relate to this, that like once you're – able to like pair flavors you kind of just like know what would be good together and like based off of tasting and like past experience so I feel like I just like have a knowledge of knowing what will be good and what's gonna taste great together yeah because like sometimes people like I'll, I'll send them my cake flavors for that month and they'll like send me an idea back and I'm like maybe we should like tone it down a little bit like that might be a little too Too much much. Yeah. yeah And you love a savory buttercream. Yes, I do. Tell me about that. I feel like most people think of buttercream and they think it's sweet. But your preference, you have a love for for salt. Yeah, I think – I mean like I make more of an American-style buttercream. I don't don't make a Swiss meringue. Are those the two Um, main – I'm I'm not a baker. Yeah, American buttercream is more like powdered sugar and butter. But I do do like some other – stuff to it that I won't say because it's kind of a secret recipe. Confidential? Yeah. But, um, (laughs) but yeah, that's my style. Like it doesn't have eggs in it or anything. That's why a lot of them, um, are vegan. Got it. Because I'll use a vegan butter. Got it. But I think that like it needs salt to balance, balance especially with like the sweetness of the cake. Mm -hmm. And if you have like a jam in it or something and understand like that's not some people's cup of tea because they're used to a more traditional like sweet, 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 yeah. Top to bottom sweet. Yeah, like going like a grocery store cake. Yes. Like people grow Pure up with sugar. that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So when you have something else, you're kind of like, whoa, that's yeah. like, but I think, I don't know. It's just like personally what I prefer. Yeah. I also really like putting 
alcohol in buttercreams because okay. I just think it adds so much depth okay. and like cuts the sweetness. Yep. I don't know. It's just like- Right through. I just think it's so good. Does I don't know why. Does that all burn off or could I get tipsy if I eat a lot of cake? No, it, it's burnt off. <laughs> okay. I was like, we have a whole new business. We're going to start selling <laughs> wasted cakes where people get drunk by eating cake. This seems like a fun business. Oh my gosh. It all burns off. Okay. So it's for flavor and yeah. for texture. Gotcha. I, um, yeah, I, cake is, it's a funny world in, in the world of cake. So you sell your weekly cakes, you have your wedding cakes. Do you have a vision or a hope for a storefront one day or a larger cake business? Or are you thrilled to kind of live where you're at at the moment? Um, I don't know if I ever see myself opening a store. Mm -hmm. I just like think that there's such like a DIY kind of vibe, like isn't the right word, but like, you know, it's like vibe. vibe to my yeah. business. You're a one woman show. That like, I don't know if I want, like everything's like working right now. Yeah. So I don't know if I ever want to like do that. I just yeah. like, like I used to see myself like maybe opening something, but I really don't know. I yeah. think- the next step would be like maybe a cookbook at some point. Okay. But it would have to be under like the right circumstance because like right now I'm so busy working. Like it would need to be one of those kind of things where like I could take off like a year and not make cakes and, and just like solely focus on that because yeah. like with anything that I would want to put out, it couldn't be rushed and like – like I would be a perfectionist about yeah. that, you know? Yeah, you do it the way you want to do it or yeah. you're not going to do it at all. Yeah, like I'm like really into making muffins. Like I brought you those muffin cigs. I'm I testing. know, I saw your pumpkin muffins on Instagram and I was like, I need to buy these. I'm not <laughs> a good baker. I, I'm recently learning to cook, but I feel like mm -hmm. baking is so exact. I'm more emotional with baking and that doesn't tend to work. No, yeah. But your muffins look amazing. Thank you. So I can't wait to try what you brought. Yeah, Um. but like with those recipes, like – I'm so obsessed with getting that recipe perfect. Mm -hmm. And like people would like DM me and be like, recipe, recipe, recipe. Yeah. I'm like, you don't understand. Like when you test something, yeah. like you can't just make it like twice and, and then, then it's like perfect. Like it takes like 10 to 15 times to really? like make something absolutely perfect. That's why like I recipes. I didn't realize that. No, yeah. It's like I feel like we live in a world right now where food – trends and like recipes are just like getting pumped out so fast there's like, a million of them every yeah, minute yeah like i see them on tiktok and i'm like did you guys like even test this like how are you <laughs> posting a recipe every like yeah. i just like don't understand how it like this fast culture that we're yeah. in i feel like everything is quick and everyone wants it yesterday and everyone wants a response right away yeah and it's the same with food and i feel like you have this not a throwback but like a harken to a different period where like you took your time and you bought quality ingredients and like to make something good takes time. Yeah, exactly. Um, but people do love your recipes. I do see you're like on Instagram. Oh, yeah. People like, make the muffins. Yeah. I'm honored, honestly. Yes. It's so cool to see just like it work in other people's ovens, yeah. especially because everyone's oven is different. Yeah. So. And their know. muffins are different. It's yeah. like really. Okay. So you have the pumpkin and now gingerbread. Yeah. Are you going to be doing like muffins every season or you're seeing how you feel? Gingerbread might be the the end for a little while okay. until maybe next spring. Okay. I don't know. Because muffins aren't a winter thing or just Well, they for are, you? but okay. like, I don't know. I feel like in the winter, like I'll make the gingerbread and then I always end up wanting to have like a blueberry muffin mm -hmm. because I have like frozen blueberries from the summer. Yep. But I already have the blueberry muffin recipe down, yeah. so... Got it. So but we've you know got what? three recipes so far. Yeah, but there's always room for improvement. Planning a wedding can be stressful, but Generation Tux understands. They've designed a suit and tuxedo rental process that you can complete entirely from home. It's easy, convenient, and stress-free. Forget about store visits, last-minute pickups, and ill-fitting suits. With Generation Tux, you'll choose from over 25 premium wool suits and tuxedos, customizable with hundreds of accessories and colors. Plus, you'll get free shipping and delivery 14 days before your wedding. Free replacements, prepaid returns, and amazing customer service. Visit GenerationTux.com for the perfect suit or tuxedo delivered straight to your door. Well, we have some questions from some followers, if I might ask you some of these questions. Okay. <laughs> um, 
this one is totally random, but I loved it. So I wanted to start out with this one. Okay. Um, the question is from Alex Ush 2008. If you were a Barbie, which Barbie would you be? Oh my God. I don't even know, honestly. <laughs> I don't I mean, know either. I feel like I feel like maybe classic Barbie. Classic or maybe, Barbie. maybe like a sporty one. Ooh, classic or sporty. No, actually, I want to be the workout one. Okay, because you do like to work out. Yeah. You do Pilates? Yeah, I'm a Pilates girl. I'm a yoga. secret. I watch all of your stories. It's a little <laughs> bit like a weird addiction that I don't understand. <laughs> um, so I know you do Pilates, but Pilates and yoga, that's your, yeah. your workout Barbie. Is that like daily, weekly? Uh, it's like a few times a week. Okay, yeah. very nice. <laughs> um, a question from Delta Airlines. <laughs> Delta underscore airlines what flavors will you never get tired of chocolate chocolate i think chocolate is timeless okay. and it this is actually a fun fact it's probably my least ordered flavor really people don't want chocolate half the time in emails people are like no chocolate meaning they want vanilla or they just don't want they just chocolate. don't want any chocolate not even a interesting chip. wow yeah. not in the frosting the cake nothing yeah crazy and are you a mm -hmm. um a light a medium or a dark chocolate lover Dark chocolate. Always. Yeah. I had a feeling you'd say that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm basic. I love milk chocolate. I like it's milk chocolate too. You know what? There's time and a place for everything. That's true. Time and I love that. Time and a place for everything. <laughs> um, nervous Rack, <laughs> R-A-C-K, <laughs> these names are incredible. <laughs> um, any tricks for cooking for one? I can't get through my leftovers or produce without it going bad. I agree with that when I was single and attempting to cook. I felt like things always... And you, in addition to baking sweet, you also love to cook savory as well. So yeah. um, what are your tricks for cooking for one? Well, I live alone. So, you know, I'm only cooking for myself like 99% yeah. of the time. Yeah. Um, I think it takes practice, but you need to just like not overbuy. Like I only really shop for like a few meals at a time. Okay. So like... And I try to be really creative. Like if I buy carrots, I'm not just going to like use them one way. I try to like use those carrots for multiple meals. Mm -hmm. And I also just like hate eating the same thing every, every day. Every day. Same. Like for like I like the same breakfast. Honestly, I can't do a meal prep because I don't want yeah. that every day. But one thing I'm obsessed with recently this fall. So one, making roast chickens. Okay. And then you use your roast chicken like, you eat some of it, you freeze a lot of it. Okay. And then you have, like, all the carcass. You make your own stock, and then you can make, like, multiple soups with it. Mm -hmm. From so, that stock. Yeah, from that stock. And then you can also just, like, have the stock in the freezer. But then, like, I'll make all these different soups that are really versatile mm -hmm. that I could, like, make one with brothy beans. Or yep. I could make, like, tortellini soup or, yep. like, something like that. And then you freeze everything and... Um, single portion containers and you label everything. Oh, interesting. So, so you just pop it in the microwave. Yeah. Or on, or on the stove. Yeah. It's so easy. Oh, and, and then that way it's pre-portioned and you don't have to let the whole thing thaw out before exactly. you eat it. Very smart. I'm okay. obsessed with doing that. I think that's a great answer to this person. And I think it's hard because you... So then you're not just going to the grocery store once a week or the farmer's market. Like you're making multiple trips. Yeah. I, I honestly am like grocery shopping every day. All the time. But I do it on purpose because it's like... It gets me out of the house uh -huh. and like I'll purposely only buy a few things because I'm like it'll force me to go out the other day. But I I will say this, like I have the time to do that and I just like like grocery shopping. Yeah, you enjoy it. It's just it. an activity I like. I think it's a weird thing in my brain. I only want to – I want to be like the most efficient possible. Yeah, and I understand that. But I think like – then you are going to be wasteful because I'm just buying in bulk and I'm buying on feeling. But if you're going multiple times, then you can kind of, you know, change the way you're going or you can be a little more flexible with the way that you cook if you're lucky yeah. to have a grocery store that's near you, I guess. That's the big thing. Yeah, very true. Um, another one from Maddie Tupac. What other chef cook positions have you had before being self-employed, if any? I bet you get asked this all the time Actually, because you were a communications major. I don't think I've ever major. answered this before. I, the only job I've ever had, I've, okay, so I've never actually, like, worked in a restaurant. Okay. I worked in a restaurant for pop-ups okay. and, like, working an event once. It was, like, in a shared kitchen space. Yeah. But the one job I did have in, like, a food atmosphere, I guess, 
was an ice cream shop okay. in high school. Okay. And I would scoop the ice cream. Like a local one or like a big franchise? Like a local a one. local ice cream store? Would, okay. But I will say my boss always complimented me on like the way that I would style the ice creams. <laughs> <laughs> like sometimes she'd be like, oh, Amy, like let me get a picture of that. Wow, and I like was like, you knew how to make okay. the scoops. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Perfectly round. Yeah. So that was cool. <laughs> Amazing. So no technical training and no food service work at all. Yeah. Perfectly. hundred percent self-trained. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. I love that. It's really crazy. But it's, it's also not, I mean, the thing is, is if you work really hard at something and you have a passion for it, you can do it. That's so true. Right. Like you weren't, you didn't go to culinary school to make cakes, but you made cakes with your mom. And then now you're making cakes for other people. And clearly they're good because people are buying them. So you. do you know what I mean? Like, no, yeah. I could go to culinary school and and say I went to culinary school and no one could buy – like I could still not make something interesting or delicious. Like it doesn't necessarily yeah, – that's so true. There's no wedding planning school. No one with the, who's a wedding planner has a degree in wedding planning. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I studied – U.S. and China foreign relations, like nothing to do with this world, mm -hmm. but you have a passion, like you can just, you just do it. Are there any romantic flings in your life? No. No. Are you looking? No. I love I that. haven't dated anyone since high school. Okay. Yeah. Intentionally. And intentionally. So you're not on any well, apps? No. Yeah. I, mm -mm. No. <laughs> I think, I, I think like right now I'm at a point in my life where like if it happens, it happens. Okay. But I'm not going to like force myself to like go on dates and have interviews Got respectfully. It. No, everyone like, does their own thing. Yeah. So in your, in your mind, how would it happen organically? Like you'd bump into someone at the farmer's market, like the beginning <laughs> of like a rom-com movie or like, yeah. and I'm not knocking it because that sounds amazing. Maybe something like Or you like reach that. for the same seasonal vegetable. That would be so romantic, and your honestly. Hands, your fingers just graze <laughs> over the top of each other <laughs> um honestly yeah okay or, or just like through like a friend That's but i think good. it would be like hopefully it's something like that at i some love point. that i'm here cheering that on i want that to happen and i want to hear all about that moment at the <laughs> farmer's market <laughs> rian nayak says what gives you inspiration when you feel uninspired to cook for yourself probably going on instagram and just kind of like looking through food pictures on my explore page okay. or I will try to like look at one of those lists of like seasonal vegetables okay. and try to like see if something catches my eye or my friend has like a New York time cooking subscription. Okay. So I'll go Log on, her, I'll go on her account cause I have access. I have uh -huh. my own folder. I love it. And I'll look at that or I'll like look at stuff that she saved on it. So and when you're uninspired in food, you dive deeper into food to help you kind of reignite that flame. Yeah. Also, ooh, another really good thing is there's this book that I have called The Flavor Bible. Mm -hmm. And it's basically like it will like list an ingredient. So like a clementine. And then it will have like every food pairing and like spice and cheese and meat and whatever that would like go with that specific yeah. like fruit, vegetable, whatever it is. So sometimes like if it's like – like, I'm trying to think about what stuff I want to make for Thanksgiving. So I'll, like, go in there and be like, sweet potato, and then get some ideas of things. From the Food Bible. Yeah. Amazing. So Food Bible, New York Times, and Instagram. Yeah. I love it. Well, this has been so oh, much wait, fun. Oh, wait, Flavor Bible is Flavor what it's Bible, called. Flavor Bible, not yeah. Food Bible. Flavor Bible, and then I think of – it doesn't matter. This has been so much fun getting to know you, the person behind Young Kombucha 420 and these beautiful cakes. Where can people find you? Um, you can find me on Instagram, Young Kombucha 420, TikTok. I've kind of been like in a TikTok. Era. I was gonna ask. You're like kind of like subtly dropping TikTok. Is that something you're I don't know. putting I a lot of effort I into? I just like randomly gone to the algorithm, so okay. things are happening. I'm also doing Vlogmas on okay. TikTok. I'm posting like vlogs or videos every day in December. Okay. Which is always interesting. Okay. Um, because that's a really busy time of the year for me. Yeah. But it's fun. All right. Um, so people can see you on TikTok and Instagram. Yeah. And if you want to order a cake, young kombucha at gmail.com. Do not, Do not DM. DM. <laughs> <laughs> Weddings ish. So excited. Now it's time for Ask Jove, where I answer your questions all about love, life, celebrations, fiancés, parties, travel. Really, anything you want to know, we've got you covered. I'm joined in studio by my <laughs> dear friend Sloan, and we are so excited to ask Jove. All right, Jove. Today's question. Mom wants to run the show. Mm, She's paying. Doesn't she always? Woo! Hey, Mom. All right. This is coming from Emily from Chicago. Hi, Emily. My mom's paying for our wedding, and I'm so grateful. 
but she's starting to micromanage everything. How do I keep the peace with my mom while also making sure our wedding feels like us? Mm. Emily, this is the age old question. (laughs) Firstly, I love a strong mother. Yes. I do. I feel like I'm a strong mother. You are. Um, I think that there's a lot of questions in this question. You want your wedding to be about you as it should be, but you also have someone who's paying, therefore they have power. When I meet a couple, I ask who's paying right out of the gate. Sometimes it's the couple. Sometimes it's the family. Sometimes it's Mixie Dixie. But whoever is paying has the power. Like we have to first just accept that that's reality. If you give me money, I have the power, right? Um, And it's the same in a wedding. But I think the most important thing is to get into mom's head. Mom, is is mom putting on a show for her friends? Does she want to look good for other people? Does mom want to relive the wedding she never had? Mm. Or does mom want to give you what she thinks you want despite you telling her it's not what you want? You know, like, who is mom? Right. Kind of figure out where mom, where her intention is coming from. And I think for every mom thus far, overbearing or not, the intention is good. The intention is love. It's joy. But it's easy to get lost in a wedding. So step one, what's mom's intention? Step two, what are mom's priorities? Like, what does she really care about? I'm not going to say she can't care about everything because those moms do exist and maybe this is your mother, but I, I, I'm going to dare to say that your pri- like the things that are most important to her may not be the most important to you. So I think it's about figuring out, mom, what are the most important vendors to you? Is it food? Is it service? Is it wine? Is it what I wear? Mm-hmm. Is it how I look? Like what are your non-negotiables? So then at least you're being very clear and you can know where you have flexibility. So she says like food and service is number one. Therefore, I need us to book the best place in town with the best food and service. I'm sure you're not going to be mad at that if your priorities are flowers, decor, and entertainment. Mm -hmm. So I think once you each know your priorities, then as long as you give mom what she wants, mostly – then you can find space for yourself in there too. I think it's just hard to navigate that. If you have a wedding planner, this is a great conversation to have with them or a best friend or someone in your wedding party to kind of be the me- you know, the intermediary between the two of you. Um, but that's my thought is that moms want to help. I mean, they're your mom. They gave birth to you. They think they know best and maybe they do. They've raised you till this point. They know everything about you, they think. (laughs) So that's what I think is, is we really have to find her priorities and where you're flexible and you, okay, mom, I'll let you have that, but this is really important to me. And then I think you find like a, a happy medium. What do you think? I totally agree. And it's actually, was your mom overbearing? No. Um, but we were also very stern in the things that we wanted whenever we got married. And that worked. It did. Um, there were some things that we were really flexible on. And I think that that was an important thing, um, you know, when sitting together and thinking about what our priorities were. And this is something that you touched on as well is like, it's important to know mom's priorities, but it's also important to know what your priorities are as a couple and constantly revisiting those when things can get contentious or (laughs) whenever you're trying to make a final decision on things, does this align with our priorities? Is this what we want? Exactly. And that can evolve because you may not even know at the start because there's so much information out there. Is this what I really want or is this what I want because it's what the internet says is cool, what my friends Mm -hmm. did, what Vogue says, what I saw on Instagram? Like why, you know, is it really what you want? So I think identifying your priorities, definitely step one and where you can be flexible. Right. Because then mom feels involved. And I will also say it's psychological moms, Mm. right? They mean well, but how do you give them what they want while also maintaining your own authenticity? And I think it's about being honest with them. Mm -hmm. And also there's a little, there's a little dance that you dance. Okay, mom, I hear that, you know, food and service is most important to you. So I'm, you know, here's the things on the menu that I would really love. I trust you 
I know that you know best in this area. I'm going to let you take the lead. Mm -hmm. But that means that in flowers and decor, you're going to trust me and I'm going to take the lead. You know what I mean? Like divide and conquer. Totally. Assignments are great. Assignments, <laughs> Assignments are, great. are great. Give mom a task. Yes. Moms love tasks oh, and checklists. I mean, being a task-oriented person, there's nothing more fulfilling. Same. I'm so, not a mom, but I am the mom. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I love a list and I love a task and it kind of keeps you busy a little bit. Yeah. And it also helps you feel some level of like accomplishment and, and involvement. Completion. And yes, exactly. All and of the above. So get mom involved, make her feel included, but don't lose yourself in the process. Mm -hmm. So sit with your fiance and write down your priorities. What of all the wedding vendors, what are the top three things for you? And then ask mom, what are your top three things? I hope they're not identical. Right. I hope that there is some leeway in there. And just have honest conversations. You know, mom, I know you mean well. I love you. It's not your wedding. It's not about you. Your friends are going to be happy even if we don't do white linen and, and cutlery and crystal glassware. You know what I mean? Like yeah. find the reason why, layer it on with love, and all will, all will work out. Absolutely. Emily, you're going to have a great day. Well, that's it for today. And wasn't that fun? Don't forget to send your questions. Again, any questions, send them our way to hi at jovemeyer.com and maybe I will answer them on air. If you can, send a voice memo. I love to hear your voice. Weddings-ish! Thank you again for listening or watching Weddings-ish with Jove. This episode is brought to you by Generation Tux, the perfect suit or tuxedo delivered straight to your door. GenerationTux.com If you liked today's episode, please subscribe and leave a review on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. We're also super grateful to Mel Flannery for the music on the podcast. She created, produced, and designed all of the music. And don't forget, you can watch Weddings-ish with Jove on Love Stories TV, YouTube, or streaming TV channel. Visit lovestoriestv.com slash live for the list of streaming apps. Weddings-ish. Weddings-ish.